and welcome to this morning's service of thanksgiving our call to worship we give thanks to god for god's love endures forever come this morning to give thanks to our god who is good amen welcome to our morning we this this morning service on youtube and zoom we are giving thanks this morning for the last six months that we have been able to worship online together we are moving back into the church building from next week. And so we just thought that we would take this opportunity to really give thanks to God for just being with us through this difficult time and for the absolute gifts that we have been to one another and the ways in which we have been able to support one another online. And so the service is going to be focused on thanking God for this time. And so our first hymn I invite you to join with me is Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. will be uh, opening our prayer this morning, but Jackie at the moment is in a car driving Keke to university. And so she has sent in a clip for her prayer and that will be followed by the choir who will take us through the beautiful hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Thank you. I 
as we gather, may your spirit dwell within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. Gracious and merciful God, we exalt your holy name and we praise and glorify you for your wondrous love. Ebenezer, El Shaddai, thank you for your grace and mercy that has brought us thus far. May your spirit that dwells within us rejoice as we worship you today. Love and Father, Good Shepherd, as we receive your word today, bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As we gather, may your spirit dwell within us. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in Jesus' grace. Thank you so much to the choir and Ruth for leading the choir and that beautiful photo at the end. The reason I was muted uh, was because the man's phone rang. Don't people know ministers only work on a Sunday morning? <laughs> um, this week, I got such a lovely gift. Um, we have been supporting the leprosy mission over the last few years, and they have been building a hospital, a Christian leprosy mission hospital. And they have put together a two and a half minute clip from some of the staff and, and having a look at the actual hospital. And so it just felt, uh, I said to Jared, he had impeccable timing that he sent us this clip this week. So we can give thanks and a big thank you to everyone who's contributed to this uh, beautiful ministry and the building of the hospital. And so 
um, Martin is going to play us this clip, just showing us where our money has gone and what it has meant to people. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much for your support for the Lapuzi patient, the visible patient, our hospital and our staff. Uh, with your support, we can make a big change for the Lapuzi patient and for the disabled people here. And we appreciate every single support from all of you. God bless you all. So thank you to everyone for your contributions uh, to that ministry. Kat's going to lead us in our notices for the week. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to everyone worshipping with us this morning. After the service, please stay on Zoom or join us if you are currently on YouTube using the link on email and share in a cup of tea or coffee virtually with us. All our notices for the week are in contact and care and Christchurch Petswood will be having their church meeting at 11.30 today via Zoom. Again, just staying on the same Zoom link. This afternoon at 5pm, a joint Taze service will be taking place with St Francis via YouTube. The link has been sent out this morning by email. Everyone is very welcome to join us for this special service. Later on in the service today, there will be a Church of Youth breakout room led by Mel and Fiona. You will need to click join once you are invited to join the breakout room. If you are invited to join by mistake and wish to stay in the main service, then please don't click to join. Next Sunday, Christchurch Petswood will be meeting in person for our morning worship at the church, but the service will be live streamed on YouTube as normal. And we look forward to worshipping with everyone by whatever means next Sunday. Birthdays this week. Jill has a birthday tomorrow. We wish you a very special day, Jill. And Sally and Martin are celebrating their wedding anniversary tomorrow. We send our love and congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. So I, I did invite folks to send in thank you clips uh, this week. And so I've put them together and we're going to listen to them now. And a big thank you to everyone who contributed. Thank you. Hello, 
Well, amidst all the gloom and despondency, I have felt thankful for my garden and all the plants I couldn't flog at the Bonanza, my greenhouse, my garden bowls, my family and wife, of course, but most of all, Samurai Sudoku's. Hi, I give thanks for our community at Christchurch and their willingness to adapt to the way we've been holding new services. Um, I give thanks to the churches who've joined us while we've been in lockdown. Um, that's been amazing to grow our community in this time. Um, I give thanks to our family, to all the elders and church officers who have um, kept things together during this time. Um, I give thanks for uh, tea um, that's got us through this. And uh, most importantly, I give thanks for Nadine and her amazing skills and spirit. Thank you. Hi. I'm grateful for the way this pandemic has brought us as if we were being kept apart. I'm so grateful for the wonderful worship that we've shared together. And if I can mention the WhatsApp prayer group, that has just been such fun. We of course shared prayers, but we've also shared music, photographs, poems, reminiscences, jokes, and lots of laughter. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, Nadine, and all who have worked so hard to produce our weekly services through lockdown. I have appreciated the time and patience that has gone into presenting them. Not an easy task. Thank you for the reassurance, love and hope we have received through Nadine's sermons, Bible readings and music. Thank you for the contributions by the children who always happily and joyfully give us love. And thank you, Nadine, for sharing your life experiences. The jet ski story has to be my favorite. The thing that I am most thankful for over this time is the random and spontaneous acts of kindness that have been shown to me and to so many people throughout our communities, both at church, at work, my friendship groups, over the last few months. It has been a real blessing. Apart from the fact that all of our extended family have managed to stay COVID free so far, and that our daughter Catherine has been ready and willing to do all the shopping we have needed. What I am most thankful for happened when I had had some shock health news and was drowning in self-pity. I was binge watching Bondi Rescue from Australia which is about the lifeguards on the famous and dangerous Bondi Beach. One rescue performed by the head lifeguard brought me a completely new and overwhelming perspective on the patience, love and care of God for each of us particularly when we feel life is sweeping us along out of our depth and how God gently but surely rescues us and brings us to safety through God's wonderful grace in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for leading me to that programme at that time. I give thanks for the internet, Zoom, WhatsApp and YouTube. It's meant that we can keep together as a church family and I give thanks for that. I was thankful for not to go to school. Hi everyone, I'm grateful for this time because it's shown us new ways of doing things and it doesn't really feel like we're going back to church because this time has made us feel like we've never really been away.
Thank you so much. Um, thank you for those who did send in contributions, but I know that there's so many who didn't that have thanks. And so our next hymn is, Father, I place into your hands. And during the song, I invite you to think of the things that you are grateful for and to place them in God's hands and to, to be thankful that we have got through this period of time with all its ups and its downs, but we've done it together. So our next hymn is Father, I Place Into Your Hands. to have um, invite the Church of Youth to go out now. Um, they will be reading the story of Claudia the Caterpillar and learning about butterflies as well. Um, and while Kat is organizing that and getting people into the breakout room, um, our readings which will come after that are a little different today. What I've done is I've asked a number of people to read different Bible verses that have got to do with thankfulness, a whole variety of uh, voices and um, from throughout the Hebrew scriptures and the New Testament. So we've put them all together into a clip and that will be our Bible reading for this morning. I haven't put, I haven't asked people to say where it's from because there's just one sentence through uh, for each one. Um, but we'll be talking about them a little later in the sermon. So um, I can see they are still Church of Youth. So we still getting them together into a group. And I will watch the screens to see when the little blocks start to disappear. A big thank you to Mel and Fiona who will be hosting the, the Church of Youth. There we go. Blocks are disappearing. Kerry. There she's gone. Lovely. Thank you, Martin. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. I thank my God every time I remember you. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving 
to overflow to the glory of God. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Thank you so much. This will be followed by the sermon where, we, where I'll be picking up some of those scripture verses uh, throughout. Thank you, Martin. A young boy named David was born without an immune system and he had to have a marrow transplant. Up to that point, he had spent his entire life in a plastic bubble in order to prevent exposure to common germs, bacteria and viruses that could kill him. He lived without ever knowing human contact. When asked what he'd like to do if, if and when he was released from the protective bubble, he replied, I want to walk barefoot on the grass and touch my mother's hand. Well, six months ago, if I had told you that story, it would have felt strange for most of us and there would probably have been very little that we could relate to. Friends, old and new, after this wildly incredible six months, I think we could relate to feelings of living in a bubble and being cautious of viruses and also living with the threat of death as a consequence of becoming unwell with COVID-19. But the part that I really want to focus on is what this little boy dreams of doing when he's free of his clean bubble. He wants to simply walk on grass barefoot and touch his mum's hand. One of the gifts of this time has been that we have been invited to take stock of the things that really matter to us. And all our Thanksgiving clips give expression to these. Thanksgiving for our families, for the people who have drawn close to us, for the ways that we have been supported and the ways that we have been gifted with the opportunity to support others. It has been back to basics that has meant the most to us. How we long just to sit with a friend again, drink a cuppa with family, hug a grieving friend or family member. When these were denied to us, how we realized how important they were and also how grateful we are to be able to give expression to some of them now. I think we have had a renewed gratefulness for life and a renewed focus on what is important. There was a significant increase in people attending church online. We needed God and we looked for God again in new ways and in new places. I believe that the yearning in the deepest part of our souls had the time and space to come to light. A few comments about Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is infectious. John read for us, all this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. When we see God at work in our lives and in the lives of others, and we share in that wonder and awe of what God is doing, it fosters in us a natural thanksgiving that bubbles over into overflowing and allows us to show God's glory and goodness in the world. I had the privilege of hearing your thank you clips a good number of times as I was editing them and I could not stop smiling. It brought me joy to listen to them. They were infectious and it was wonderful to listen to how God has touched you over this time. I did hesitate to use the term infectious given the whole virus thing but COVID can't take this word too. The love that you feel from gratefulness takes over if you allow it to and permeates through your body, your mind and your soul. Thanksgiving is from God. Secondly, Thanksgiving can be challenging. Jesus shared his soul, his spirit with all of his disciples. 
he had invested in this little group of people with all of his heart. He had painstakingly taught them to abandon all their preconceptions of the world. He had carefully taught them to see the world as God sees the world, to cherish every living thing. He has shown them how to challenge the systems of power with nonviolence, and he had etched in their hearts the understanding that the world could be just and fair and that they should not settle for anything less. He spoke of an upside down world, a kingdom of God world where the first shall be last and the last shall be first. The weak were powerful, foreigners were to be welcomed, women were also made in the image of God. Jesus poured out himself and all of himself for the world and his little motley crew of followers. And then, on the night that he was betrayed by one of them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, this is in remembrance of me, as he did with the cup. So in this meal, filled with friendship and tragedy, one that is to be a constant reminder that Jesus gave all of himself. He held nothing back from us. He loved despite the consequences. In this powerful meal that we all share together as well, he gives thanks. In the midst of the painful, he gives thanks and keeps his focus on a God that is with him always. This week, Kat, Carey and I attended an online Messy Church training. One of the take-homes is that Messy Church is not named Messy only because we like to have Messy crafts, but because people in church and the world over are messy and we mess up a lot. Life can be tough and tragic at times. We all have suffered during lockdown in a number of ways, and in reality, it will take us a long time to fully comprehend how we have all changed by this. Whether we have lost our confidence, we've had family upheavals, lost our jobs, or lost someone that we really love and care for. Life can be so incredibly messy and in these moments, it is hard to hold the bread and the wine up, the body and the blood of our suffering, and then to give thanks. So giving thanks can be challenging. And thirdly, thanksgiving is hopeful. Mary read, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's love endures forever. We know that God is with us always, even when things are dark and rough. Some of the toughest things we experience in life, we end up grateful and thankful for. I faced death right in the eye, up close, at the age of 23 years old, through illness. It was a tough time, but one of the experiences in my life I am most grateful for. I don't take my life or the opportunities that God has given me for granted. I get to live ordinary life as it is the most precious sapphire that I have been given. Being barefoot, walking on the grass, or holding the hand of someone you love feels very different when you know you were a hair's breadth away from it being taken away. Hope, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, is when we want something to happen or to be true and usually have a good reason to think that it might. The reason Thanksgiving is hopeful is that God is good and God's love endures forever. Amen. Thank you. We're going to uh, join together to sing our hymn for the years. Thank you, Martin.
you. Hilary will now lead us in our prayers of intercession, which will be followed um, by the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Hilary. Shall we pray? Loving Father, we've gathered today to look back and give thanks for our response to the last few months of separation. And we rejoice that we can do so. But mixed amongst the joys, we remember also that there are many people in the world whose lives have been ended, saddened, or made more complicated by the COVID virus. So we who have been so blessed ask that we may be a blessing to those in need of your love. We know there are many places in the world, too numerous to mention, where hardship and misery prevailed long before the arrival of COVID, and that their situation has now been rendered even worse. As we read about them in the papers and hear about them in the news bulletins, in our despair for them, receive our prayers. Nearer to home, we think of the many families and especially those within our own fellowships who have lost friends and relatives. We remember their pain at not being with those so dear to them in their final days and of funerals not of the kind that they would have wished for their loved one. Comfort all who grieve and who continue to carry that sense of sadness and loss. Give us the sensitivity to find the right words at the right time to show that they are not alone. We pray for the bereavement help point at the Methodist Church in Petswood, which will be reopening its doors tomorrow. There are many who struggled with feelings of loneliness, isolation and depression. There are school children and students who were deprived of important milestones in their lives. There were long awaited weddings and family celebrations postponed. There were terminally ill cancer patients unable to share the precious time remaining to them with loved ones. There were people who would normally depend on social care, who suddenly had no such support. Families with loved ones in care homes, unable to visit. For all whose lives have suffered, we share in their sadness and their longing for things to return to normal. We pray for all who have been financially challenged and those who now face the prospect of unemployment. We lift up all employers and business owners who are struggling to keep their businesses afloat. We pray for the researchers desperate to find a proper vaccine and for all struggling to deliver a quick and reliable testing procedure. We ask that our politicians and their advisors remain sensitive to the uneasy balance between keeping alive both people and the economy. Within our own churches, we pray at Christ Church for Lynn, Pauline, Michael and Pamela, Lorraine, Janet H, Sheila, Mike, Cyril, Martin HW, 
Janet and her brother's family. With Beckenham, we play, pray for David and Tish, Sheila and Pat. At something, our prayers are for Andrew and Jill. We join with one born URC in their prayers for those receiving treatment and in poor health or low spirits, and all those who are grieving at the moment. May God comfort them at this time. Lord, sometimes it seems we are in danger of being overwhelmed by the needs of so many people. Help us to keep on praying, identifying the positives, the places where we ourselves can do some good, and laying at your feet those other things which are beyond our comprehension or powers to address. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Hilary, for leading us in our prayers of intercession. Our concluding hymn this morning is The Church is Wherever People Are Praising. And I invite you to join together. go away from this service this morning with the confidence that God's love endures forever. May our thanks be infectious in the world. May our thanks be a challenge in all times in the world. And may our thanks be a sign of hope in the world. May our love of Jesus be a thanks for all to see. Amen. I'm going to invite you to say the grace together. It should appear on the screen in the next few seconds. And then I invite us to, to say it together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.